Bernd. Welcome to the Future Proof Operations Podcast. Hi, Benjamin. Nice to see you. Nice to have you. Bernd, could you give me a 60 seconds overview of who you are and what you are doing? Well, <laughs> IFM is the manufacturer for sensors and software. We are characterized by high variance and uh, low volumes. And my team is responsible for the operations in the business unit position sensors. That means we are running the headquarter plant here in Tetnang Bechlingen, the plant uh, for 3D sensors in Tetnang Bürgermoos, and uh, our sites in Sibiu, Romania, and Singapore. And how big is IFM? Well, in total, we are over 8,000 employees. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, family, well, let's see, the fam this year we are targeting around about uh, 1.4 billion euros turnover. Mm -hmm. This family-owned business uh, headquarters, a bit untypically, uh, the technical headquarters here in Lake Constance at Tetnang, with uh, the fa fa owned by the family book. And the uh, sales and finance department is located in Essen with uh, the family Mahofer. So we are owned by two families since uh, now over, well, over 50 years right now. Mm -hmm. Today we want to talk about digitalization in the factory, the smart factory. And first of all, I would like to get your opinion of Industry 4.0. It has been a topic for the last decade. Is Industry 4.0 still a relevant topic for well. manufacturing companies or are we somewhere <laughs> else already? No. Well, uh, for, uh, well, the slogan Industry 4.0 is a very good marketing slogan, I would say. Uh, going into detail, it means uh, digital improvement for me in a person. And that means it's the continuous journey of uh, that we started with our lean improvements. And now we are running, improving it with the lean tools, uh, with, with the digital tools. We need to have creative digital solutions to be able to position ourselves in the in, uh, international cost competition in order to be ahead of the Eastern European countries. And, and for example, you know, I have the my my own race in the company. I need to compete against CBU, and and that's a tough journey. So we need to have really good ideas and solution in order to have the same cost prices here in Germany than in other countries. And that's why we have to use digital solutions in order to be cost competitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Industry 4.0 is still very relevant. Good for us today, good for us in the podcast. <laughs> um, I would like to start with the uh, award which we have uh, won uh, some years ago. 2020, you won the Smart Factory or the Factory Award together with IFM. And um, I would like to know what have been the reasons for it? Why are you proud of it? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we uh, uh, wanted to know are we working on the right topics in our company? Mm -hmm. So having an external view on the things you're doing on daily basis is, is quite important because uh, it opens up your mindset. And uh, therefore, getting some external auditors in the company was very useful and uh, finally we have we got the feedback we are also right position for the future that's very important and for <laughs> for our employees it's also very important because we are a swabian company you know and in a swabian company nothing sad is praised enough for your work mm -hmm. and so uh, also external recognition is very important Uh, for our uh, workforce that they see we are the hard work is recognized and we are working on the right topics. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to establish improvement culture and, and therefore, uh, well, if you tell them always we're working on the right things, no, it's also important to, to get external recognition for it. That, uh, well, you know, If own guys tell them always we're doing the right things, mm. it's not so important. And external guys tell them the same things, basically. When you say you are working on the right topics and the factory award is underlining that, what are that topics? So, first of all, 
the basic work. So we doing the lean wise, we uh, trying to to set up our operations in in the right way and manner with the basic lean tools. That's very important, and uh, you need always to have a hand on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, additionally, uh, we have with our digital idea focused the future to be cost competitive against our sister plans in the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was uh, uh, the main thing because we, or the IFM family, we want to guarantee our work uh, force, the place here in Tetnang, that we sustain a secure future. That's very important for us and the family. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the lean tools, I assume you think of lean tools in a digital, in a future-proof way. Um, how do you combine being lean on the one hand side and increasing the level of digitalization in the factory? Well, uh, giving you a good example is that um, uh, due to that we are having a high variance, so you can design your uh, workbench uh, in the right way and manner with uh, positioning everything in the golden zone so that it's easily to assemble. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, to run a high variance, that means our operators assemble not on daily basis, but uh, one workbench can assemble up to 120 variants. Mm -hmm. So, and how should an operator know that? Uh, if a variance comes only once a month or only once a quarter that he's doing the right thing. So if we put him a digital assistant on the side, you know, he's feeling uh, safe and secure to do the right thing. Yeah. And that's why we need a smart workplace in order to do the right things. And this is uh, quite an important thing. The uh, digital supporters or assistants uh, shouldn't be recognized as a, a controller. Yeah. So that's a clear mindset you need to install in your workforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super interesting. When you talk about worker guidance in general, you th say there is a thin line between controlling, monitoring and uh, empowering the workers. And yes. for you, it's important that the focus is on empowerment and not on control or monitoring yes that's so once you burned uh, the digital assistant with uh, a controlling objective uh, you will never get any support in the workforce for it mm -hmm. that's for us a really clean line also defined with our workforce that it's only a supporter and it helps you to do the right things on daily basis because there are some jobs if you do them eight hours a day you know <laughs> you can't always have the right track on it so and if then the system tells you well look in that direction or in that direction uh, it it's really r recognized that we're going to help them with these tools mm -hmm. and uh, it's not that we are looking then on, on the productivity. So today you didn't work on a proper level. No, that's the wrong way to do it. Because basically, if you have a good workforce, they want to do the right things. And yeah. if you give them the right environment, you will see the line always produces at a good level in a way and manner you, you need it to be competitive. That's my experience. Mm -hmm. I would like to deep dive a little bit more into that worker topic. So how you see the role of the workers in your factory, in your company. Before we do that, Bernd, help us to understand or in, yeah, to, to understand a little bit better how the factory at IFM looks like. So if, we, if you would take us on a walk into the factory, you already talked about benches, workplaces, the, the workers are assembling specific products. How many workers would we see there? How are they working in general? So uh, a typical production line uh, is a combination about uh, uh, handmade assembly benches and fully automated machines. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a mix out of fully automated processes and uh, yeah, handmade assemblies. 
A typical line in one shift, you would see 10 to 15 operators. Um, and uh, we have a clear corporate identity in our factory. So <laughs> uh, we, we say we have orange blood and this uh, goes <laughs> clearly through the whole factory. Mm -hmm. So our workbenches are designed in black and orange also mm -hmm. all the machines so you will recognize an IF factory an ifm factory across the world uh, also if you <laughs> walk to suppliers you'll see that this machines belongs to us uh, and that's very important because we have a really good culture across all factories because the operators worldwide know they are treated in the same way and manner how important, um, <clears throat> how yep. important is it um, for you as a company, that the workers, the operators, feel empowered and they feel part of part of the company. Um, especially when we talk about worker guidance, you talked about it, monitoring, controlling, um, and empowering on the other hand side. How important is culture in that direction? We generated our own uh, internal uh, culture or brand. Let's put it's called I Family. Mm -hmm. And I family means that um, we uh, uh, have our same standards across globally. Uh, it doesn't matter in which country. And uh, because I've seen different standards according to certain countries, you know, and that's not the way in many IFM acts. Mm -hmm. So I like to have one global standard that the operators feels everywhere at home, basically, and. I'd like that our operators everywhere get the chance to be part of new products so they can work in pre-series. So they feel the innovation uh, right at hand, basically. Mm -hmm. And if they are interested and have uh, um, and want to know more, it's going even up that they can uh, work themselves up to uh, the role as a development assistant. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite unique. So if and we have several careers here at IFM that managed to, to start at an operator level and now being in the role of a development assistant. And if you are interested in what you're doing and if you like uh, to support our improvement culture and innovation culture, there are opportunities even to work yourselves up into the development department. And that's quite unique at IFM, I think development and learning opportunities for the workers, for the operators are important and part of the culture of IFM. Do you see a trend in the last years that workers or the operators are engaging more and more with it, that they are using that opportunity more and more? Uh, first of all, I think you need to to give them the room. So I have an old school proposal system. and. Um, that's for me still very important these old school tools because even for small improvements they get a recognition so we maintain this this feeling now uh, that uh, you are um, a valued operator or a valued member of our team mm -hmm. and for the future this is getting more and more important because now we not only have to focus you know on, on, on the standard physical processes we have also to focus on digital processes and uh, i'd like to get also the involvement of our operator in the digital processes and they need to see if this is good or wrong what or is the process smart that we offer them and uh, it's also very important to get their feedback on digital improvements and and that's for me where the future lies to that the orders that the operators are also able to challenge us in our digital tools that we use for the production mm -hmm. and that's a bit more complicated uh, i think uh, what we are doing today because yeah physically you clearly can see what you're doing but uh, the data that the digital tools are collecting, you know, that's a bit of, how should I put it, um, uh, magic, <laughs> let's put it in that way, because the operators can't feel and see directly what's happening to there. And if they get a bit of understanding what's happening there and know if that's the right or wrong thing, what we're doing here, that's mm -hmm. for me very important. 
if you take a look on the task and responsibilities of the operators today, and we take a look in the next 10 years, how will these kind of tasks and responsibilities change? You already brought in the term automation. So I assume yeah. there is already some automation going on in your factory. You, you talked about it. But probably that proportion of automated tasks will increase. And meaning, well, that would mean that task of the workers, of the operators will change or will need to change. In which direction? How do you envision that? Well, the at the moment, uh, there's a bit of a fear of the workforce that the digital tools will uh, pinch uh, their jobs, basically. Mm -hmm. So, and first of all, we need to overcome that because uh, some processes are nonsense to digitalize them. It's not only because it's cool to digitalize processes, you need to do it. No, it needs mm -hmm. to be cost effective. That's the main goal of the journey and uh, the operators uh, need to understand these processes and, and uh, well as i said it's the most important thing that we get a proper feedback uh, that we are helping them to to work efficiently and and uh, be cost effective and and uh, they need to be open to work with digital tools and to support them mm -hmm. uh, as long as they can see it's really supporting my daily business. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. the, the operator need to recognize the digital tools as partners in the future. And that's really a mind change mm -hmm. that uh, the companies face in the future in my eyes. Digital tools as a uh, supporter as a partner this is a great segue to another topic which i want to dive in with you when we take a closer look at that digital tools hardware and software i remember our preparation call and you talked about development of software at your company so doing it yourself at ifm in comparison to buying software from some vendors and you have a specific opinion i do not know personally or from the ifm group but Explain us how you see the trade-off between make or buy in digitalization in general. Um, that's a tough question. <laughs> well, at the beginning, uh, uh, when we started our digital journey, uh, the first focus was on uh, is software available for the job we are looking for, so market availability. And... Uh, at the start of the journey, uh, it was difficult to find the right software for your tasks because, uh, yeah, as a leader there, we, it was a challenge to, to get the companies together to work on the right topics. So if we do now uh, make or buy decision, I'm looking at the development costs for uh, own development. Mm -hmm. um, is it a core know-how? Because in, in some tools, we have also really our, our uh, own philosophy, and that's what I'd like to keep in IFM. And finally, and, and that's coming more and more important, is the maintenance cost of the software, mm -hmm. meaning how to keep up or so, uh, the right security level uh, and uh, the uh, integration into our standard software. And regarding then the external software, you need to, to see the customizing costs and, and the licensing fee that you face on a regular basis. And then it, for us, it's, it's a clear make or buy then. But the trend is going uh, clearly, if the software is available on the market, buy it on the market uh, and focus yourself only on, on uh, your core know-how basically. Mm -hmm. Have you had some learnings on that journey, especially when you take a look in the homemade software area? So you, you <laughs> yeah. built something oh, yourself yeah. and now you talk about the maintenance cost, for example. So, at the, yeah, <laughs> if you start small, you know, you think it's an easy solution and uh, the first solution is quickly made. But then if you start and rolling and out, roll the software out through all the plants, it, it's getting bigger and bigger. And also the maintenance costs are really getting bigger and bigger. And uh, the other task is how to keep up the right security level. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, 
once we are now coming to a certain point where we clearly decide that uh, or asking ourselves is it the right way to do everything on our own mm -hmm. or uh, getting if now our standards available uh, getting the standards into our company because uh, the, the well uh, the fear that we are getting uh, problems from outside is here on on regularly basis and and we heard that also now conti was faced in august i think with a, a big threat and and that's a, a clear view on, or we need to have a clear view on the security levels mm -hmm. and with uh, external software it seems to be easier at the moment but it's a thin line between costs and and everything is there a mind change going on or is it still needed when we have that trade-off between the internal IT will build it or we will buy some software or some hardware from outside? I think there's there's a change going on also for IFM because uh, regarding, first of all, cloud software, I think this is coming more and more important. If you have a global footprint, uh, software in the cloud is for me now uh, very useful because it's safe in the cloud safer than on premise because i can't keep up the security standards that i have on the cloud mm -hmm. and i'm well we had now two power breakdowns in the in our central plant and this delivers you great problems because once your server structure is going down not only one plant is going down all plants are going down and if such system would be in the cloud, we might not have these problems because uh, there we have a, a different level of support. Mm -hmm. So it's a mind change coming up that um, we need to have a clear decision on what systems are uh, best in cloud and uh, what systems are good on promise. Mm -hmm. Let's assume com manufacturing companies will buy more and more software, probably cloud software. I remember our preparation call and there you said software mm -hmm. will be more and more expensive and probably too yes. expensive, especially for Mittelstand companies in future. And I find that super interesting because in the end, Mittelstand companies need to handle that cost. And if they have to buy more and more tools, more and more software, they will get a problem. So what, what this, do you see there? Why is that? Well, um, the problem is... Um, uh, I need to have uh, normally a maintenance contract or a license contract with my supplier of the software. And uh, if we're going now uh, in a recession, for example, then I still have this fixed cost on daily basis. And uh, I can't afford this fixed cost because I'm not making enough turnover. Mm -hmm. And this is for the Mittelstand very critical, I think. Uh, because uh, these uh, tools are for, or if the tools are becoming more standard, I hope the cost will go down. But at the moment, the prices on regular basis for me are too high. Mm -hmm. Also for IFM, uh, because uh, I can't, uh, well, make it uh, very easy for you. So if I buy an OEE software, that will improve my machine uh, or I will have a huge improvement step with the next three years because it's proven that if you look at the numbers, you make your efficiency step by 20%. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. But uh, And then you keep it on, on, on the level, basically. But what happens then? I still need to pay the cost on a daily basis uh, because... If you not watch the OE, it goes back down, but I'm not gaining anything. Mm -hmm. And just for keeping the level on uh, uh, OE level of 85%, I have to pay quite a lot of money to the guys. And and therefore, we, we need to find maybe a different model in order to make this software solution more interesting for the German Mittelstand or general small companies, basically. It's not only the German Mittelstand. <laughs> Do you see a solution for it? Hmm. I think we need uh, pay-per-use needs also to change. Well, maybe pay-per-use. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, 
a good model, I think, because if I produce less, I have to pay less. So um, that's a model we think of it. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, because then it's directly um, linked to your performance, mm -hmm. and uh, or uh, at the beginning you have at the first three years you have a different contract uh, because you need to pay also for I think some consulting services at the start to get software up and running, and once it's a standard software, you can have a, a standard agreement where you can you reduce as a software company your services and and they can still use it to look at their numbers mm -hmm. so there needs to be an agreement between the providers and the manufacturers i think for the future yeah okay so the payment models need to change and they need to be more yes. flexible and yeah, they need to be adapted the to the circumstances function. yes mm -hmm. okay if we stick with the digital tools in general as one topic in our preparation call, it was a great preparation call because you <laughs> showed me uh, a video in addition, which was showing the workbench and the worker guidance system you built. And it looks it looked like crazy technology, which you built yourself. If we take a look into the future of digital tools in the factory in general, which kind of technologies are already used and will be needed more and more? Um, and I assume in your worker guidance system, for example, you already built in some great technology. Where we can see a lot of help is uh, the um, use of um, uh, KI, as the Germans would uh, say, Künstliche Intelligenz. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think it's not the right way. So it's machine learning machine that's learning. becoming more and more important for us because we have um, certain uh, tasks that uh, can easily be or can clearly optimize with machine learning. Uh, giving you, well, the, our worker assistant is based on machine learning. So we um, recognize the hands of the operator without any special devices, you know, and, and they are not feeling controlled. That was my. Uh, also statement at the beginning yeah. so they only did they work as they work normal on daily basis and only if there's recognized an unusual behavior the system tells them please check this process again and this is recognized as uh, a great support for ifm operators because we are not controlling their personal performance and there are other tasks now within the company where I can use this machine learning clearly to support uh, our operators because, for example, uh, we have cleaning fluids for our electronic machines, for example. And uh, according to Toyota production system, every week you need to have a look at it. Mm -hmm. But is it really necessary to have a look at it? No, it's not. And therefore, if I uh, if I'm collecting the data and if I find a pattern there and use then the machine learning processes, the machines then tell me uh, two or three days before, well, in three days you need to, to change uh, the fluid there or a filter or whatever. And uh, we have development, oh, there's a great use of these tools now. Mm -hmm. We've connected it to an old school uh, pager system, basically. You know, the, the, we, the fire departments are connected with yeah. the, the pagers and now the machine can talk to the operator, for example, and it tells them, well, uh, at the weekend, there needs to be a thing or uh, the filter change or uh, in more critical phases, if you have a fully automated machines and the bunker runs empty, uh, the machine tells the operator half an hour before it runs empty, please fill me up. Mm -hmm. And uh, this... Great takes a lot of stress out of the workforce and, and uh, the, the operators are really happy to have these systems in hand. Yeah, I find that remarkable that you are building that machine learning knowledge um, in your company. And I think when we talk about that technology, it's very important that you keep up with the pace and with new enhancements and new things which are popping up there. So how are you building the IT department or the IT team at IFM, how you make sure that this knowledge is there at the first step and then they can continue to, to improve their skills? 
Well, uh, we decided to have um, our own production IT department. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important that you have a team that is dedicated uh, uh, clearly to, to improve operations. Um, it's part uh, and it's directly connected also to our general IT department. That's very important that they have a good relationship uh, to, to fulfill uh, the, the general standards of good software implementation, basically. Yeah. But these guys are uh, a team out of uh, industrial engineers and really computer engineers and develop uh, the things together and so they have the right focus on the topics and uh, we easily can uh, implement new systems there because each one or they, they're talking on eye level basically that's very important and uh, the uh, there's we are not getting uh, facing a wall from the IT department that's mainly our difference at IFM because we are open for these new things and we've managed uh, open culture together with our IT department to to set up uh, these new tools and, and bring them to life in the factories. Very remarkable uh, what you are achieving with your team. So sounds great. And, and, uh, and this is... Uh, IT needs to be part of operations. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a mind change for quite a few IT departments, I think. I have heard in our preparation call that for you, sustainability and digitalization are very much connected. And I would like to get your thoughts, thoughts about that. So why is sustain sustainability important for the factory of tomorrow? Well, you know, uh, we have only one world and uh, we in IFM, we want to have also or we clearly have the goal to be also attractive for the next generations and therefore you need to maintain uh, uh, your environment and maintaining your environment means that you need to uh, yeah, well how should i say it you need to de you need to really be sensible in the use of the resources and uh, digitalization helps to reduce the, uh, well, uh, um, how should I say, uh, that we are using our resources sensible. Mm -hmm. And this means for me that uh, if I'm running a production line and there are, you know, a lot of electrical motors, they are uh, assuming a lot of energy because normally they're running 24 seven. And uh, is this necessary? If my system knows my shift pattern, and uh, if the system knows, well, I'm only running two and a half shifts, why is are we not able then to stop the line fully by the shift pattern? If the system recognizes there's no volume needed, then turn fully off the machines. Or if, because we're using high variance, if we are bypassing a certain processes, why not driving down the electrical consumption in that area. And this could be done easily with a digital, a proper digital environment. Mm -hmm. So the energy that I'm not using, I don't need to produce it. And that's the main core of a sustainable environment uh, is your production line. Uh, well, can you run it uh, easily according to the requirements you have and, and turn the not needed parts off, basically. Is the current crisis increasing the pace of this process? That's a tough question. No, I don't. Well, first of all, I have to say yes, for sure. But to change the things, it's not, uh, we do not have the speed to change it in, in, in the, what it would require right now. Mm -hmm. um, because these, changes are really heavily uh, changing your internal structure mm -hmm. and and this takes time so yes it the current crisis focus focuses this topic but uh, we are not able to run the required speed at the moment i would say mm -hmm. bernd we are coming to the last question 
I would like to know what is your vision for the factory of IFM 10 years from now? Well, in the future, I, my vision is to have uh, a safe explaining environment so that the, uh, uh, like at home, if I ask my Alexa, you know, I'm getting a lot of support. Mm -hmm. And uh, my vision and dream is to have uh, a self-explaining working environment also uh, at IFM for our teams in the future. And uh, I'd like to have a workbench that explains the operator what he needs to do. And uh, that would, be, you know, you come in, you feel at home, you have a nice environment and the, the workbench tells you exactly what to do. That would be great. I'm hoping to achieve it uh, and we're working on it. Sounds like a great vision. Bernd, thanks for being on the podcast. It was inspiring to talk with you. And looking forward to check in in the future and to see um, yeah, where we are with your vision. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. To, and uh, looking forward to see you in the factory. And uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, come together and, and uh, make the world smarter and easier. I will take you by your words. Thank you. Bye Thank Bernd. you very much. It's been a pleasure. All the best to you.